Right, welcome to the Legacy Blueprint Podcast. Today's guest, super excited to have. This guy was an army officer for eight years. He's a family man. This guy is, he's looking for different types of financial freedom, wealth, you know, building the legacy. That's why he's on the show, right? But also has, has built the systems to create the geographical freedom, the time freedom, and all these other things that we're chasing as business owners, as family members, as great husbands, great wives, great great fathers, great mothers, right? Brent, welcome to the show. I'm excited to talk to you today about these fun things. We just spent like 10 minutes catching up before we even got the show started. So hopefully we're going to give the audience a little bit of a recap of some of the things we just talked about as well. Yeah, thanks, Joe, for having me on the Legacy Blueprint. It's definitely an honor. Uh, Listen to a couple of your shows and you had some amazing interviews. So good to be on this. I'm definitely humbled (laughs) to be standing here. That's for sure. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun call, man. I mean, we, you know, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, what you do, first of all, I think is cool. It's unique. Um, You buy and you trade land, which, you know, I've been in the real estate space for 15 years or so. And like, you know, everybody wants to talk about the same stuff, right? Fix and flip houses, wholesale houses, now commercial real estate and and, uh, multifamily is the sexy thing, but nobody ever talks about trading land. We're definitely gonna get into that piece, but let's start back a little bit at the beginning. Cause I mean, we're both vets. Talk to us about that story. I know you mentioned earlier, because I told you I was a CB, you know, you, you actually served with some CBs in Afghanistan. So you obviously have some, some legit time under your belt. Talk, talk to us about that, that transition and, and coming home from, you know, the military. And then what got you into the land? Like, to tell us a little bit about that piece. And so crazy, such a wild ride and everything, every step teaches us to the next step. You know, we, we have, the ability to get through today and then tomorrow we'll, we'll learn what we need to learn to get through tomorrow, which is really cool. Just looking at the, I mean, my very short time on this earth, like everything is kind of led to another and thank God I was able to get into the military because what a wonderful experience, but that was a chapter of my life. And it's almost seems like so long ago. I just got out in 2015. Um, I'm sorry, no, 2018, 2018 is when no I got way. out. So two <laughs> years ago, but uh, I was, so 2009 or 2008, I go to basic training. Um, 2010, I'm already in Afghanistan. I kind of joined the army a little later because I got into real estate in 2007, uh, about the time everything was hitting the fan. Um, so I was like, man, I got to do something a little different. So I'm going to go back to school. So guess what? I was like, you know, Air Force seems like a great place to go. I try and join the Air Force. And luckily, the, the recruiter that denied me because I have a little crazy past when I was graduating high school, I got in a fight. I got a, a battery charge on my record. Long story short, they don't like guys like that in the Air Force. So luckily, the recruiter was kind enough to tell me that the Army was next door and they'll take anybody. <laughs> so guess what? I went next door and joined. Um, so basic training a couple months later uh, on the way to Germany, about a month later from there on the way to Afghanistan. First deployment, was lucky enough to be stationed with somebody called, or a group called the Seabees, had no clue what they even were for like the first six months I was with them. Found out they were Navy, they build this cool stuff, they build gyms, they cut hair. So they took really good care of us Army guys. Um, But long story short, come back for one year and then on a second deployment. Uh, So I was in a very fast op tempo of Germany. I was with route clearance. So another basically what what is route clearance we sweep roads for mines and i was a communications guy i was just working on the radios and the computers and all that stuff but uh combat engineers are some of the most amazing fun people you'll ever meet in your life um i think discovery channel did channel did a, a video on them uh shark diving and combat engineer shark shark cage diving and combat engineering was about the similarity of dangerousness. So it was really fun riding down the roads of Afghanistan, finding bombs. I never got blew up. So I've still got all my screws somewhat tightened in my head. Um, but second deployment was a little, a little bit more rough. Uh, my, my first wife left me on that deployment and I was like, man, I thought I had it all figured out. Um, so I knew something needed to change like my first four years in the army, I wasn't listed the first four years of the army, but I was gone almost uh, two and a half years of that first four years. So I don't blame her for leaving, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I met uh, my current wife now, the woman of my dreams um, after the army pulled me out of Afghanistan, 
the second time and sent me to college to be an officer. Uh, so I knew I needed to probably get out of the military at this point after the army's, you know, invested all this money. But about eight and a half years later, I'm getting out of the army and I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to replace my salary? Like this is, this is like danger close getting out of the military. I need a salary because I just had a brand new baby too. And now I have three kids. So I'm like trying to get into wholesaling houses. I wholesaled a couple houses and I hired a coach. Uh, his name was Tom Kroll with Wholesaling Inc. Um, great coaching program. But I remember him saying, you know, just throw away the vacant land parcels. <laughs> and I was like, all right, whatever. So we threw those away. And then I hear this guy talking on a podcast about how he's just crushing it in land. And I was like, I'm going to mail these land, these landowners. So I mail them and the rest is history. Like we've now turned it into an extreme system. Uh, we've got hundreds of parcels of land that we own. Uh, we've got multiple thousands of dollars a month coming in on these land payments and it's created uh, time freedom, financial freedom for me. Uh, we built a team around it. So we kind of rinse and repeat a system that keeps churning every day. Um, so sorry, I gave you so much, but here we no, are, man. That was, that, was, <laughs> that was awesome stuff. I mean, first of all, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm confident. I, I'm, I'm happy for myself that I was actually able to, to re retain uh, the air force and uh, the air force and army jokes there and, and allow you to keep talking. I have to pat myself on the back that, uh, that I got through that. Uh, well, give them to me now. Let's go. I want to hear there's, it. There's some good <laughs> stuff in there. Uh, no, but uh, no, I mean, great story, man. I mean, and, 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 you know, um, uh, and, and powerful stuff, you know, like you went through a lot of transition in there, but like one of the things that you said that I think was so impactful. And I think that I don't want to glance over it, which, which is that, you know, we learn, we, we adjust and we move forward. Right. And like, you know, that, that's, 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 that's really impactful thinking that, you know, a lot of our listeners, I think can get a lot out of when it comes to day to day stuff. You know, it's like you, you learn, you adjust, you move forward, you adapt and overcome. Right. That's, yeah. that's how I think, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs just need to learn to figure it out, like push through, you know, forget about this analysis paralysis. Like you're not going to dictate a way that's going to work guarantee. You just need to work your way through it. Right. So true. Nothing's guaranteed. Only thing's guaranteed, I think, in life is you're going to have problems every day to solve. And if you know that and you expect that, we call them challenges. And people pay you really good money to solve those challenges eventually. And then the second thing we're guaranteed is death. Like we're going to die eventually. So yeah. I think that's it. We have challenges every single week. I mean, you were just talking about some challenges with your team recently, right? You, you, you uh, first of all, you have the you have the geographical freedom, which I want to cover for a second because I think that's it's super important, right? Like, like I say this all the time, if you can't take two weeks off or a month off or two months off from your business and not lose revenue, then you don't have a business, right? And you just took off what, three weeks? Three weeks is the second time since June I've done that. So June, we did a three week trip and then um, December we did a three week trip. June was the first one, it was half hazard. The, the second one was actually planned, um, but yeah. and my team, thank God for them. Um, I have such amazing people that hold me up and um, you, you show me a business owner that's struggling. I'll show you a business owner that doesn't have a team. They, yeah. they own a job. Um, but then you got to have a good team and, you know, they let me have my time and I came back to, you know, things kept running smoothly until I came back and then stuff hits the fan again. So they always like it when I'm gone. <laughs> How do you think that is, Brent? I think it's me. It's I'm the problem, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> no, seriously though, what do you think makes that culture? What do you think creates that that amazing team that that's capable of taking that responsibility while you're gone? Well, geez, man, I don't have the all the answers. That's for sure. I'm still practicing uh, real estate and business. Um, it's very it's an intellectual intellectual game. Um, that's for sure. And I. I was never good at intellectual games, but I fell forward. And, you know, I think this, the reason I have a great team is I hire people that have share the same values. You know, we're not all about the bottom line. It's about, Hey, can we help these people and also make money from it? Do they share my same values? Um, are they in it with kind of the same goals I am? And then I also know that, there's people out there that are smarter than me. So I hire the, I hire people that are smarter than I am on the, that job. So I do what I do best and that's not a lot of things. And I contract out everything else, the yeah. rest, kind of like the who, not how book we were just talking about. 
Yeah. Amazing I book. I love that. I gotta add, I gotta add one more thing to that because I think there's something you probably do that you might not even realize you do because I can tell just by the way you're talking that you do it without even like, without even realizing you do it. And that is that you trust your people enough to give them responsibility. Like, do you just hand people off things and let them do it? All the time. That's, I mean, I, God bless the military. For you see how easy that, that was for you to say that? Like, <laughs> I can't tell you how many people I talk to on, on a weekly basis where I'm like, well, hand it off. And they're like, but, 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 but what, but what if they mess up? No, they're probably gonna do a better job than you do it. Cause that's their only focus. It's their only thing. You as an entrepreneur, you're trying to focus on paying the bills. Hey, is my office clean? Um, is everyone happy? Uh, do we have 10 parcels of land to buy this month? Uh, is the insurance paid? Like you can't focus on everything, but they're only focused on that one thing. And that's getting the mail out the door every single day. And they do it so much better than you will. Folks, I got to tell you, responsibility empowers your people and gives them more accountability. When you're looking to give people accountability or you're looking for people to take accountability, you can't force accountability on them. You can't say, I want you to be accountable for this. Go do it. Right. You get accountability by trusting people and giving them responsibility over and over and over and over. And eventually they take accountability. Right. Yeah, they, they just say, hey, this is all done, or you don't even know what's being done. Um, and you share the vision with them, and they, you know, if they don't buy into it, then they're probably not a good fit for the team. But if they share the same vision, and they you, they know that you have their best interest, I mean, golly, it's that's where miracles happen. You know, I think they call those moonshots, like when you're accomplishing big things. Um, and, then, you know, I, I'll never forget... I heard this guy named A.L. Williams, Art Williams. Um, he was just, uh, he was a football coach from Georgia. And I love the guy's accent. And he talks about, you know, you got to treat your people with kindness and respect, treat them like family, learn to love them. It's going to, they're going to hurt you from time to time. You're going to have to get on to them. But sometimes like just as a parent, you know, sometimes you got tough love and you got to whoop that boy's butt. Same thing with your, uh, your team. You got to, got to hold their feet to the fire. And sometimes like, look, we only deal with a players around here. Mm -hmm. Um, so some that hurts because it's like doing that to your family member. Um, and, and usually most of the time, 99% of the time people will self-correct. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So Brent, let's talk about legacy for a minute. I mean, that's part of what this, this episode and this, this uh, show is all about, right? And I know you're a big fan of that. We, we talked earlier and you, you had actually said about what these land deals um, do for you, which is interesting, is you'd rather do a land deal where it's passive income, $300 a month, rather than do a land deal for $30,000, because what Amen. you're trying to do is stack, right? And you want to build that long-term wealth. So talk to me about legacy. What's that word mean to you? What are you trying to really build here? What's it all about? You know, when I think about legacy, I think about my father that grew up on a dairy farm and his father milked cows for a living. And then my dad moved out very early, 12 years old, and started, you know, paying rent at 12 years old. But my dad has now provided me the ability um, because I saw like growing up, like he gave me and my sister a little bit, a, a way better um, childhood than what he had experienced. Honestly, you probably gave us a million times better than what he experienced. Um, and I just want to do that for my children and guide them and direct them. And I think about legacy. I, I think back to my parents, how they t taught me to always, you know, do the right thing. Um, I didn't always know what the right thing was. And, you know, there were some times where I was a wild child and I have a lot of energy. So I was always getting in trouble, but I also worked a lot in high school and uh, whatnot, but thank God I was working and playing sports because I probably would have really gotten in trouble. But my dad always stepped in and you know helped me when it was needed. And there was times when I was like, oh man, he never helps me. He doesn't help me work on my lawnmower or my dirt bike, but he let me figure it out until the point where I was about to hurt myself and he would always step in. So I see that as legacy and we teach our, uh, our children to do that. And then the people around us and coach. So Long story short, the legacy is if I can improve one person's life, that's going to carry on and hopefully they'll improve someone else's life and it will multiply. So that will be my legacy. I might not ever see it, but it doesn't matter. Uh, if you can change one person's life for the better, they're also going to change and, and, and 
give a positive spin on someone else's life. It's almost like the compound effect, you know, or pay it forward. There's so many ways you can name it, but that's, that's my definition of legacy. The butterfly effect, right? Is that what they call it? There you go. Butterfly yeah. effect, ripple effect. You ripple create, effect. throw one little uh, coin in the pond. And I got that from Mark Podolsky. I know you've had him on your show, the ripple yeah. effect, yeah. a small little tiny coin or a rock in a pond will ripple so far. Yeah. I mean, we'll be dead and gone and it'll still rippling. So I love it, man. It's a very, very abundance mindset, uh, thought process, you know, about being able to, to create and give back and expand, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's huge and, and it really is. And I think it's, um, you know, it's something that, um, is very creationary about it. like when you think at that at that at that uh, vibration all of a sudden it, it 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 brings in more of of the right people in your sphere right how important do you think it is to have those right people in in your sphere of influence right in in your tribe oh so so right uh, it's it's pretty darn important and i actually had to have a gut check um, right before Christmas, I, I just started coaching people about six months ago on how to buy and sell land. And there was a, there was a potential student that, you know, I just felt like he wasn't a good fit. And some of the things he was saying, um, I had to just say, Hey man, I don't think you're a good fit. And it was a great decision because he showed his true colors after that. But, you know, I'm, I'm kind of learning. It's like you, you surround yourself with the people you want to be, uh, with, for months and months and months. And if you don't like talking to them in the very beginning or, you know, dealing with them, you know, trust your instinct. And uh, I'm kind of learning that. So it's like they're, they, people become a cancer and we've had to get rid of some of our team members too, because C players pull the A players down to C players. 100%. 100%. Yeah, no, I've always said that like your A players magnetize to A players, right? It's like being on like a, like a Super Bowl team, right? If you're surrounded by rock stars, man, you want to be surrounded by more rock stars that they just keep pulling them in. But those C players, they're like, they demagnetize, right? It's like, it's like cancer. Like they don't want to be near them. They just push them away. Um, but you know, if you put them in the same room, it's, it's just opposites. They don't want to be near each other. Um, so it's, it's, it's really interesting. And, and it's funny how, if you try to introduce them into a group, right, they'll, they'll immediately, you know, push themselves out of the group, right, or yeah. they'll immediately become a cancer within the group, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll kind of like segregate inside of that, that group of eight players. You know? Yeah, and like for your listeners, they might be like, well, how do I know if I got a C player on the team? I'll give you one easy way to figure that out. That person's not in the room and everyone's talking, frustrated, venting about that one person that's not in the room. Yeah. That's probably a B or a C player. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's true. And the truth is with A players, they, they never want to not be talked about to their face. Right. Like they're the kind of people where like, if you have an issue, you, you never feel like you can't be confident about bringing it up to them. That's they're true. For feedback. Right? Yeah. And sometimes A players need feedback. Yeah. Man, I need it all the, the time. Yeah. And I, I like to see myself as an A plus player. Yeah. But I take feedback very well. And that's why I have a coach. And I know you have one too. I have a lot, several coaches. Actually. Many coaches. Yeah, exactly. Many <laughs> coaches. Oh man. Brent, what did we cover? You want to get deeper into the land piece? What do, what do you guys do? And I know you offer a coaching piece to it. Let's talk about that for a minute. Um, what, what goes into the whole um, concept of it? Is it for novices? Is it for newbies? Is it for someone who's an advanced real estate investor? Yeah. My, to answer that question, my coaching, I've tried to build it um, from A to C, basically that newbie, that person that's done a few deals and the person that's, you know, got a $5 million wholesaling operation. Um, because, you know, I get a lot of guys that become students that are wholesalers and house flippers, uh, because here's the thing about wholesaling and house flipping. I also have a house buying company. Um, Jen runs it. She's, she's been with me several years now and, um, she just does a phenomenal job. She's a great business partner. And we, I think, I, I don't know, that's, I think I just attract wholesalers because I was a wholesale, house wholesaler and I kind of built the land at the same time as I built the wholesaling company. So it's kind of, to answer your question, we can do newbie all the way to guys running $5 million operations. Um, and then the reason why I believe I attract them is because it was the same reason why I wanted land. Because yes, the $30,000 checks are nice. The $100,000 checks are nice. However, 
it fulfills me more to know that my land sales specialist has just sold three parcels of land today that each one of those adds an extra $200 a month to our, our passive income. So she sells three of them at $200 a month. She just two, four, six, she just added $600 a month to our passive income. And oh, by the way, if she does that, you know, 50 weeks out of the year, <laughs> boy, that compounds quick. Sure. Who the heck needs to flip houses? Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of emotional baggage that these house sellers hold and apartment sellers hold and land. It's just like, uh, there's not much emotion. They've never laid their head there at night unless they camped on it once or twice. Um, so really in a nutshell with what I teach and what I do exactly, I teach exactly what my company does because um, I don't want to ever teach anybody a theory. I want to, you know, teach people actual practical stuff that, that we're doing today. I mean, we buy land at a massive discount and we turn around and sell it. Either we flip it to somebody if it's a buildable lot or we sell it to somebody, say it's recreational land in the middle of nowhere that we bought for pennies on the dollar. We sell it to someone on financing. Um, and I really, really enjoy those. That's our bread and butter. We buy at 20 cents on the dollar and we turn around and sell it at a premium because we offer easy, affordable payments, no credit check, no background. And we open up our buyer's pool. It's like Ford F-150, the best selling truck in America. <laughs> I don't know if it's the best truck, but you walk in the Ford, you're leaving with the vehicle. And the same thing with us. We figure out what the buyer can afford and we, we, we got the land, we offer the financing. So we're just looking at uh, stacking that, that monthly payment as many times as we can. I love it, brother. So, uh, and where's the best place for people to reach you for coaching about that? Yeah, thanks for asking so much. Uh, it's go to thelandsharks.com. That's T-H-E-L-A-N-D-S-H-A-R-K-S.com. That's for those guys that listen to this on 2X. <laughs> awesome. So Brent, what did I forget to ask you today? What did we, what did we not cover you wanted to cover? Oh, no, I mean, that's, I feel like we've had a great conversation. Um, you know, it's, it's really about the listeners, you know, if there's anything that they would be interested in, um, you know, if you're thinking about getting out of your W2 job to, to you know, flip houses or wholesale houses or, or buy stuff or buy, buy apartments, you know, take that step. You know, I know you had mentioned Joe about the uh, analysis paralysis, um, I see a lot of people fail because of that. I also have a meetup group, a real estate investor association, and we on average have anywhere from 50 to 90 people come through there. And there's only maybe five people doing deals in every one of those groups, but there's two things. Why two, two things I can pinpoint these guys doing deals is they don't do analysis paralysis. They pull the trigger. They pull the trigger. Now they do the research and their due diligence. They pull the trigger and they don't quit at, at adversity. You're always going to get smacked. Like there's, always. you're constantly going to get beat, beat up, always. but it's just getting back up every day and doing it again. Absolutely. Yeah. I always say ready, fire, aim, right? You know, don't that. do that on the range, but do that in business, right? You got to take action guys. You know what? That's what's so awesome about business is no one's going to die if, if I make a, a million dollar mistake. Um, we, I just found out we've made a mistake. Um, we, bought a, we bought a property. We paid about 30000 too much. Who cares? Yeah. Like, like, no one died. My kids are so healthy. Thank God. Like, you know, um, but yeah, we, we ready fire aim in the military. Someone's dying. Yeah. I mean, here's the fact, folks. I mean, when you're listening to this, when you sit on the sidelines and you're so afraid to squeeze that trigger, you're so afraid to take action, the chances of you screwing up go up higher and higher and higher because the one time you take action, right, you, you might screw up. But when you take action every single day, right, yeah, your chances of screwing up, you're going to screw up one in 100 and you're going to make a mistake. You're going to screw up. We screw up all the time. And you know what? So I true. make a mistake every day, but I also make a thousand decisions a day. Right. Yeah. So every day I screw up every day. I make a mistake every day. Something gets messed up every day, but I make a thousand decisions a day. So but 999 of them yeah. turn out well, usually. And, you know, that's just life, you know, call it luck, call it God. We're blessed. Like that's if it. we keep pulling the trigger, we're eventually going to hit the target eventually. And it's like, you know, we, we lost, uh, well, my acquisition manager was talking, we, we were just uh, interviewing another person to hire today. And I was like telling the guy, and we had a double, like a double interview. We had the, 
the person that we're hired to interviewing to be the acquisition specialist and I have an acquisition manager and she'd already interviewed him a couple of times. And I was like the final decision. And I was like, just talking to him about, listen, every phone call, just, just picture you're making $50 on each one of these phone calls. And she, my acquisition manager talked about a phone call that she'd been doing for almost a year and a half for this, this seller that they sold to somebody else. But what's, what's so good about that is, okay, that person sold to somebody else, but those other 150 phone calls you made this last week, you got two other sellers, you know, like everybody's not going to sell. But if you look at every decision, every phone call as putting money in your pocket, that person didn't pay you, but this one paid you for all those other phone calls, all those other mistakes, you know, yeah. all those deals we made money on and we lost money on one. Who cares? Like you made all this money. So dollar cost or not dollar cost, but average it out. It's just, it just works out. It yeah. really does. It, it always works out when you take action and you keep your head up and you just keep pushing forward. Absolutely. So Brent, I appreciate you being on the show today, man. Absolutely. Awesome call. I appreciate your service. Thank you for Thank serving you. our great, our great country. Eight years in, uh, nothing to sneeze at, man. And uh, you went out there and you put it on the line for us and you still do every day. Uh, if you guys are into uh, taking action and getting some coaching, make sure you guys check out uh, the landshark.com, the landsharks.com, plural. Either way, sharks, be, you got it. It's going to be in the show notes either way. So you guys <laughs> click the link. Um, go, go check out Brent. Go check out what he has to offer. Um, follow this guy. Uh, where do they follow you guys? Where do they follow you on Instagram, Facebook? I'm on Instagram. I actually just started getting my butt together on Instagram. Brent L. Bowers. You can find me B R E N T L as in Lima Bowers, B O W E R S on Instagram or Facebook. Same thing. Perfect. All right. Brent Bowers, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being on the show, brother. Thanks, Joe.